Good afternoon, Bloomington. It is Friday at 5.14 p.m. You're listening to WIUX LB Bloomington, and this is Growing Pains, the show where we do a lot of cool things, including interviewing local and touring artists. Today, I'm joined in the studio today by uh, two very special guests, Sun Gaze. Say hello. Hey, how's hello. it going? Thanks so much for having us. Of course. I'm so happy to have you all on. Um, you guys are playing a show tonight at the Bishop, so I'm very glad to catch you ahead of it. Um, we're going to play a couple songs, hear what your deal is, also get to chatting about your long history. Um, but could you both introduce yourself, who you are, what you do in the band before we start? Sure. Um, I'm Ivory. I sing and play keys for now. <laughs> and I'm Ian. I, uh, I do backup singing and play guitar. And uh, together we write most of the material. Amazing. And you guys are from Cincinnati. Yes. Just drove in. Yep. Um, yep. Very exciting. <laughs> Heading out tonight? No. Uh, no, no. Airbnb tonight. Yeah. Good. The show is late. The show uh, is late. For anyone wondering, at the Bishop 1045. Um, how would you all describe your music to maybe a first time listener? Um, I would say that it's under the umbrella of alternative rock. Mm. Um, kind of put a bunch of different genre sort of influences in there. So mm-hmm. there's like a little bit of country, um, a little bit of just like general rock and roll, some shoegaze, definitely heavy on the shoegaze. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say I find it very interesting because I feel, and people in Pitchfork's comment section disagreed with mm-hmm. them, but Pitchfork was saying shoegaze is back on the rise and people were saying, no, it's always been around. But I feel like you guys have been early on the wave of approaching, like people just love shoegaze, people love noise these days. Um what do you feel about the general state of like shoegaze in the music industry? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I I do think it's back on the rise. Um, I think that there was a lull for uh, twenty or so years, like since the early '90s or whatever, or whatever, thirty years, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I do think that people are rediscovering like the classics, like Slow Dive and My Bloody Valentine. Mm-hmm. Listening to those like you know, 90s records that really shaped the genre and made it what it was. But yeah, we've always, um, ever since I had found out about uh, Slow Dive and My Boy Valentine and, and pl- plenty of others, um, we've always loved that sound. So I would say that while we're not like a copy and paste like version of those bands stylistically, we still take a, a big chunk of influence uh, from them. So yeah, I mean like, I, like it's cool in theory to be ahead of the curve. I feel like, and may, maybe, maybe, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like in a lot of ways, when we started out, real like really, we've been writing songs since like maybe 2015. Um, I felt very behind because nobody liked the the shoegaze stuff of mm-hmm. yesteryear. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's interesting now. A lot of people who are making music in the dreamy shoegaze realm all share very similar influences because there were like a couple titans of the scene 20 years ago. So it's just interesting that to have like all that coalescing and to be like, I know that you listen to my buddy Valentine. I know you like Mazzy star. Like you can just hear it in (laughs) the music. Totally. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, tell us more about your inception. You said starting writing music around 2015, but first release was in 2017, your first single. Um, I think it's, it was 20... Well, yeah, the was first single was, was Whisper in 2017. Oh, we don't true. know our own yeah. singles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we always, like, the thing in our mind is, like, when we really got ourselves together was, like, the 2019 album, uh, Light and All of It. That was when we were like, okay, this is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a real album, you know? Like, mm-hmm. that's yeah. when we felt that we legitimately started as a band. And, and no one on the internet or anywhere had really known who we were before that. Right. So at that point, at that time, that was that was like our our start, so to speak, or whatever. Yeah, I but, would say so. But I mean, yeah, like I I started writing like sun gaze music maybe around like 2014, 2015, and then um, Ivory kind of like early on helped me shape it. And um, basically, I had a band, and I really wanted live keyboards, and I had everything, uh, like, all the other musicians besides that. So mm-hmm. I was like, Ivory, do you want to play keys and do all that <laughs> stuff? And, like, she did. She was a really good sport about it. So, um, And then we got to a point where, um, like, she was helping me write more music and all of that. And um, 
and then just decided one time to like sing on a song mm-hmm. um, that I, I was like still working on GarageBand. This is like really early. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, doing my best. And um, she sang on that. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, you should really like sing on more stuff. And like, I don't know the exact history of how it was, but that kind of started it, you know, that that um, song that I was working on that never saw the light of day or anything. But yeah, <laughs> but she started singing more on songs and, mm-hmm. and really helping like like I would write, you know, the chunk of a song and then she would be like that's too much that's this you know kind of help me dial it in better yeah um and then and then slowly took over kind of like the front woman role um so uh, you know like ending up being where we are in 2019 with like our first album Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 really cool interesting Mm -hmm. like um thing to kind of just come out of nowhere right so very cool i would love to listen to i have a song from light and all of it washed away cool. the final track yeah. um we're gonna play that hear how you all sounded in 2019 oh boy um <laughs> <laughs> and i've got some more um from this stream so but we're gonna listen to this one first okay this is washed away um by sun gaze enjoy <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, we are backed. That was washed away by Sun Gaze. Um, I have a couple songs in the queue, and they're all longer songs. I'm wondering, um, what do you think about this type of music that lends itself to having like a five minute, six minute, seven minute song? Yeah, we got a lot of thoughts about that. Yeah. Go ahead, Ivory. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny that you ask, and I'm trying to think of like how to like. <laughs> but well, okay, I'll, I'll like I'll start, and then you can you okay. know you can take over if you want. <laughs> but basically, we realized that we we realized that like we um, with some of the, the songs on that first album, um, and and some on on the stream um, too, we really realized that like we had kind of almost added in fluff to the songs that were weren't wasn't necessarily adding and mm-hmm. um we would find ourselves growing bored not in a way if we dislike it but just listening back and trying to be a better band all the time we would find that we would get bored for the length of certain parts you know so mm-hmm. um on all of the things that we have we kind of swung the pendulum the other way yeah, yeah. Next album is going to be a bunch of short songs. Not like super short. Short, like sweet, and to the point. Short for like, us. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. I think, well, just like in, in reading some of your lyrics, it's less of a, a lot of the songs, especially on your first album, are less like a traditional first chorus, first chorus structure. So I feel like it could be easy if you're like writing free verse or just writing um, like in an untraditional structure, it could be easy to just like have it be as long as you want it to yeah. be. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. How do you feel like when you're thinking about your first album? What was your approach to writing um, a lot of these songs? Um. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a lot of the times like we would have the song, um, at least the chords and at least some type of structure down and figure it out. And then and then Ivory would do uh, would, would find her lyrics and stuff like that um, afterward, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because actually with the first album, a lot of it, like, we had, like, a full set band at that time when mm-hmm. we wrote that, and so a lot of it came from, like, the kind of traditional band structure of, like, someone would have a chord progression, and then we would, like, jam on it at a rehearsal or something, um, and mm-hmm. then just kind of do it a couple times, see how it felt, and then Ian would go in and kind of, like, refine the structure and everything like that. So it was, like in a way like a little bit more of like a collaborative thing I think with like previous members um yeah so it has a little bit of a different sound than like this dream and onward I think yeah yeah and then when you're thinking about like I feel just like listening to a lot of the lyrics again on this album there's a lot of nature themes a lot of repeated like sun moon river like mentions yeah Yeah. (laughs) um did you like go into that very intentionally or did it just kind of were you inspired by the sounds that were coming out of the instrumentation or did you just know you're like I'm gonna write like in this very specific way yeah I think it was kind of a combination of things um definitely like a lot of it was just being inspired by like the sounds of the instruments and um sometimes like at that time anyway when I was writing uh lyrics and vocals I would basically have like a vocal line that I would kind of like sing around for a while. And then from that, I would kind of like listen to what the vowel sounds were doing and like just kind of find like the right like wording. You to like put like to it. make the words fit to like the sounds. Yeah. That you had. So the lyrics were like, they're important to me. And like I wouldn't just put like anything. But yeah. um, I don't know. It was like more of like a. Well, and also like with like the. Um, you know, the inspiration or whatever. It definitely, like, what you said about, like, nature and, like, yeah, sun, moon, river, all of those things. Like, yeah, we definitely are both, like, uh, nature-oriented people, especially in, like, our... Like, obviously, we like to go uh, hiking and all of the typical nature things, but we also like to kind of, like, um, daydream almost about that kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we're always mm-hmm. looking at, like, pretty houses and just, mm-hmm. like, pretty nature scenes and, like, you know, so... I think that like that's just some that like nature in and of itself uh, is just something that we're interested in. So kind of or- organically crops up, um, not even on purpose. Sometimes mm-hmm. you know. It yeah, just... I also like to use nature to like kind of be a. I can't think of the word like a comparison to like a reference. Sort of. I don't yeah. know. I can't. Okay. There's a specific word for it. Mm. Um, I want to say allegory, but I don't. I don't think that that's the word. But like a. Metaphor, that's Metaphor. the word, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, like, yeah, yeah. internal experiences. Um, yeah, like, I think that there's, like, yeah, a lot of things that the natural world kind of mirrors that go on within, like, 
your mind, for instance. So yeah. I kind of like to play on that. Yeah. I'm also wondering because I feel I did a little bit of Instagram stalking, of course, as you do. <laughs> gotcha. Um Going back, and you've always, I feel like, been very, your aesthetics visually have always been very in tune with the songs you've written and the imagery that that conjures. So, like, when you're thinking about the visuals, um, do those just originate organically? Do you feel like it's a persona you're putting on? Like, how important are those sort of things to you in conjuring that visual imagery? Yeah, I mean, I think um, kind of like the... Uh, kind of similar answer to um, about the lyrics or whatever is like the the visual aesthetics and like the um, the, the style and whatever that we're going for is like we just we like pretty nature uh, simply put you know mm. so I think that we just try to like do like we try to be what we like you yeah. know like so yeah so like so much of our photos on instagram are like outside and and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of geometric stuff hard angles and anything like that it's all very like just like soft trees sky ground you know that kind of stuff and uh, so i think i think it's like we don't it's not like the most conscious thing i think it is like we just love those things so much and so we just gravitate toward it like don't yeah. even, like I'm not I'm not trying to say it's like effortless because we try to you know pick things that like look good and all of that but like that's what we're drawn to and so it's kind of like at this point if it ain't broke don't fix it you know mm -hmm. that's, that's what we like you know <laughs> yeah that makes sense yeah. um and it definitely continues on to the second album the stream which I've picked a number of songs from here cool. um I my favorite song is change will come um, I'm wondering which of the three I have we should play. Body in the Mirror, Change Will Come, Storm Chaser. Do you have a preference we have, to play first? Well, I will tell you a funny thing that both of both of us would say that Change is our least favorite song You're on the kidding. album. You're kidding. You're kidding. I had to say it because I'm like I'm like shocked that like like I'm I'm glad. I'm so glad that yeah. that, that you like that song and and hopefully others do too. But for us we're just kind of like <laughs> skip <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so maybe maybe because this is you're my guest yeah i'm gonna let the listeners seek out change will come <laughs> and we're gonna play body in the mirror okay. um okay that's cool i just uh, my pitch for it is i just love the way it builds i oh, love yeah, yeah, yeah. like it yeah. just the energy it ramps up i love how it builds yeah. on each other yeah so i enjoy that aspect of it no i think i think you should play that because we've kind of hyped it up now and like for any like <laughs> listener or whatever they're like all right what is judge. this song <laughs> you, you these guys hate it she loves it i don't you know so okay well we're gonna play change we'll call. <laughs> and you decide for yourself listeners let me know what you think um this is change will come off of this dream from sundays enjoy
And we are back. That was Change Will Come, um, my favorite song off of the stream. I would love to talk a little bit about the process of making this album. Just from reading, it sounds this one you had departed from your earlier bands and we're writing a lot of this, just the two of you. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I guess we started writing this in like, 20 okay so change will come actually is a last song that was written with like our previous lineup for light and all of it crazy and then i think from then on um a lot of them like ian got me a guitar for my 26th birthday he actually built me one from like a guitar kit no Um, way (laughs) yes it's a really pretty like mauve telecaster um but he taught me some chords and so i started playing guitar um over the course of like the pandemic and stuff Mm -hmm. and so a lot of the songs like this dream and storm chaser strength and softness sun and eight um Slow the burn. Slow the burn. Pretty, pretty, pretty much, much, pretty much all, all of, them. of them except for change. Like, like, like you mentioned that it was like we had written it um, maybe a year or so um, prior to kind of when we wrote um, all the other songs for the album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 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 but continue. a lot of them. Um, I mostly just like wrote while Ian was at work because I had taken a break from working at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was just like sitting at home in the sunroom, basically like learning guitar. And then that's where a lot of those songs came from. And then I would kind of just like have a structure or whatever and bring it to Ian. And then he would flesh it out from there. So yeah, Yeah. it was different from album one for sure, but it was really fun. Yeah, It, it was kind of, it was cool. It's like, it's like, it is our pandemic album, but it's not about the pandemic or anything. It's still just like all those interpersonal, um, you know, uh, topics or whatever mm-hmm. that are, that we, that we kind of hover around, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but we, yeah, we have like a rehearsal space not far from where we live. And, um, really like during like March and, um, April when in 2020, when everything was like really shut down and like, not even that many cars on the road, yeah. um, we were like, well, we live together, so it's not <laughs> like we're going to give each other new germs. So we'll just go to our rehearsal space where there's also nobody and just, like, record. So we just did that for, like, a pretty much, like, a straight month. We'd just get in there, mm-hmm. and, like, I would show me a new song, and we'd, you know, like, like structure it and all of that and record it. And um, it was kind of cool, and I feel like that maybe that lends itself to the cohesiveness of the album, like all the songs kind of sounding similar like they're different moods but like the production and all that stuff like it sounds like an album i think Mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah i think so i think it's pretty cohesive so yeah that's really how it was yeah ivory ivory like in essence wrote the songs and then i just kind of like i I cooked them i baked them (laughs) (laughs) so you were doing the two between the two of you were doing all the instruments all the instruments yeah yeah i played guitar on like a couple things like i played on strength and softness and sun and eight and i played keys on couple of things yeah. too but yeah beyond that like ian plays drums he plays bass and obviously like the lead guitar on mm-hmm. all of our stuff yeah. so i'm wondering because i mean with the two of you doing all the instrumentation and i think just the nature of this genre you were saying that there are things that when you're listening to change will come you're like i wish i could have added yeah i mean how do you know when to stop because with such a dreamy sound you could just keep adding adding and adding and it would sound good so <laughs> like right. at what point do you know, like, okay, song's been done. We finished it. There is no point. Yeah, there isn't. It's there literally isn't. just like, you okay, have we've to been just... working on this for a long time. It's time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay, actually, yes, yes. I will, I'll, I'll redact that. The point is having an urgency to release the music based on maybe the feelings, the times, the subject matter, um, and just letting the mixes be what they are, um, and just letting them go, so they can still feel fresh and yeah. relevant. They don't, they're not. They're not. They're not getting stale by sitting for a year and having you work on them. Yeah. So that that's really like what we kind of did with that one. We were just like, we can't let these sit for too long, um, and we gotta we gotta get it out. So we did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they did sit for about a year because <laughs> with Storm Chaser, like. In 2020, we had started oh, filming yeah, our music video, and yeah. um, it was actually cool that it went the way that it did because initially like we had like a very loose kind of idea for it and Mm. then um 
and I think like the field that we were using flooded. And so we ended up like not being able to film for a while. And then when we went back, it had been planted. And so it was just like a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. And we only had like half of the footage that we needed for it. And so we basically had to wait until the next May came around. Crazy. To yeah. <laughs> really to hold into like the seasons. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but during that time, I had this like, I don't remember if it was like a dream or just like a, a daydream or a thought or something, but I saw this like structure in the middle of a field, which is what we ended up building and doing for the Storm Chaser video. Yeah. And so that time, like, gave us the time to like build that and then figure out like yeah how to incorporate it and make more of like a story Mm -hmm. out of the video rather than just kind of like some vibey like field shots which is initially what it was going to be yeah we realized that like we're like man maybe we could do something better and stuff yeah she Mm -hmm. she came up with that uh uh, the set idea or whatever and yeah so um yeah that really made it so so okay so some amount of time is good but not too much time <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a finite a fine I think it's line like one of those know. things where it's like um just like all in good time all in good know? time yeah. yeah it's gotta like yeah we're very intuitive people mm-hmm. and so we just like yeah it feels right it feels good to yeah do. exactly you know? if yeah. there's a delay then probably a reason be, yeah so. yeah and then for the, I mean, you've since released um, several singles after the album. And are those, like, are will those appear on a future album? Mm-hmm. Okay. Exciting. Yeah, at least one of them will. Okay. And are you, do you have, like, a whole other batch of album songs ready? Mm-hmm. As you're saying? Okay. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> um, how do you, and is it, again, like, intuition which to release as a single? Yeah, this... Kind of. No, not this time. Not this time. <laughs> okay. This time, okay, this Maybe. time, sometimes <laughs> in the past, and this isn't giving it away. It's not like we're on a record label, so like, who cares? I can say whatever I want. Yeah. But, you know, hype is hype is fun. Um, but with this one, we were like, oh, we played it too safe with, like, singles and, and, and marketing and blah, blah, blah. So this time, it's like, all right, let's dig in. Let's, like, let's get, like, the edge and, like, the not make it just so safe and possibly boring or dull with like what we re- what we release as singles and our some of our like um gosh sorry i forgot the word um like the branding and the image imaging like promo, stuff. Uh, promo stuff that we we're yeah. going to do yeah so this time it's not intuitive it's like more of like a on purpose let's make this kind of a little bit of a way so that it can yeah. it can really grab people, you know, hopefully. It might it might split people, but it might, you know, like we're we're gonna try to have a way instead of trying to be a catch all type of thing. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. 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 Capture a new audience. Yeah. <laughs> Keep yeah. the old one on with something new hopefully, and interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean like I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but at the same time I'm gonna make the art that I wanna make. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna like specifically be like, Oh, I think our old fans would like this. Like I'm not I'm not gonna do that. I mean I think that like the direction that we've taken the third album in, like, there's going to be plenty of things to choose from. Like, people yes. who like some of our recent singles will be very happy. People who like some of the stuff from the stream will be very happy. So, mm-hmm. but it is like a pretty even split. Like, it was almost two separate things. But yeah. 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 Well, it's exciting mm-hmm. to see the full project when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, are you allowed to say the name of the single that's on the album? Are we? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We can talk about it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's gonna be new twang. We're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna add that to album three. Okay. Um. Yeah. Just because we think that it's the right thing to do. Yes. And I have that one queued up. So right. I think we should listen to it. <laughs> Perfect timing. This is new twang. Sun gaze. Enjoy.
And we are back. That is New Twang, which you all will hear on the upcoming album. Um, we've got only a couple minutes left. So I just wanted to say um, I, I am very intrigued and inspired by your beginnings and just how it kind of all came together really well, um, maybe without any preparation. But what advice would you give to aspiring musicians? And what advice would you give to people looking to make music with people they love and care about? So I would say for anyone who wants to start writing music, like definitely just start and do it and put it out, even if you're not 100% sure if like you love it or whatever, because if you don't start, you're never going to, and mm -hmm. there's never like the perfect, you're never going to have like the perfect song. So you just have to start somewhere and trust that it's going to lead you to where you see yourself in the future. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, and working, working close with people you love, I think you have to put on your big people patience pants so to speak <laughs> and um really just like take some deep breaths if you start to get emotional or worked up about certain things and um make sure that you have some clear boundaries with your partner um or or a you know loved one of any kind whatever but someone close maybe if you live with them you know have some have some time away have a little cool down period if, if you need it um and really just try to communicate try to be vulnerable and honest and try to tell people what you're really feeling and um you know just don't don't hold anything back but try to choose nice words to you know articulate what you want to get across so yeah wonderful advice yeah. <laughs> well um we are gonna have to wrap up but cool. the people can see you tonight at the Bishop. Yes. 10.30, 10.45? Yeah, doors at 10, and okay. then music at 10.30, 10.45. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And we probably play at, like, 11, I'm okay. guessing. Playing in the middle, but yeah. all, all the bands are really yes, cool. Yeah, so, so get there early. Yeah. Get there early. Mm -hmm. um, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. I mean, what, what could Come people on. be doing? Come yeah. Right, exactly. It's college <laughs> town. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you there. And then people can follow you on Instagram at... It's, yes, it's sungaze underscore official. Okay. Mm. And music on all streaming platforms yep. and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ivory, Ian, it's been a pleasure to talk with you all today. Thank you, Natalie. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you all for listening. I'm normally on the air every week at 3 p.m., so I'll be back next week um, with an interview from Glixon, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, mm. But thank you all for joining me today. This has been Growing Pains. Enjoy your Friday. See you tonight. Goodbye. Bye.